In this module, we will do a quick summary of everything that we've talked about. During the series, we've discussed the four core elements of the training. Architecture, deployment, communication, and exclusions. In the architecture module, we've discussed the idea that we have an endpoint client installed anywhere around the world on laptops, desktops, etc. It connects to the smart endpoint server. We've discussed the fact that this server can be on premise or it can be on cloud and you can manage that smart endpoint server either through smart endpoint, which you get when you install a smart console or with the web interface. And you can use both options when you use cloud deployment or on-premise deployment. Moving on to the deployment part. So we've used the portal to manage it all from the web interface, right? So we've needed to select the version we want to use. We've downloaded the nano agent. And we've discussed the fact that you can install it silently, meaning we won't allow the user, the end user, to have the option to postpone the installation it will just happen silently uh, which is not the default uh, or you can just say uh, you'll install you'll run the agent the user will have to approve the installation because you know you want the installation to be on a proper time unless you're setting up the clients before you hand the computer to your user capabilities so when we say capabilities we mean what do you want the endpoint to do to run threat emulation firewall compliance which capabilities you want to be enabled. So by default, we have the threat prevention suite and you can add more capabilities. We saw that there are different capabilities for Windows, different capabilities for Linux. So when we moved on to the installation, we've also saw how to install it on Linux, which was fun. You have a script, you move the script, you make it executable and you just run it and it downloads everything that it needs from the cloud, very cool. We also saw, by the way, regarding the installation, that yes, you can use the nano agent, which acts as a dropper, or you can also have the full package. So you just export everything that you need. It's also known in the industry as a standalone installation or an offline installation. So we support that as well. Visibility, we saw the logs, how you can filter through the logs, very cool. We saw the uh, threats hunting option, which allows you to really investigate what happened within your organization. And we've talked about the policy. So the policy can be either by default on computer mode or mixed mode, which means you can set up your policy based on users or computers, which is very effective if your users are roaming between different desktops or computers and so on. So very easy and fun to use. And we saw that basically a policy says who is going to do what. So you can set up a policy that, for example, finance will have to use this encryption, but uh, R&D, for example, won't have to use this capability. So you can customize and play with those rules very fun to do. The most important thing is, of course, to save the policy. Communication. So we've talked about the fact that the client communicates with the server every 60 seconds. And of course, you can customize that timer. Once there's any change, it will start the installation or modification, whatever it is, how you can easily upgrade the client as well, because it communicates with the server. So everything is synced if there's a status change you'll see it from the portal and from the client as well unless something got wrong we saw the list of services and port numbers that needs to be open because the great thing about harmony endpoint is that you don't have to sit in the office to use it right you can be a client sitting abroad uh, in a coffee shop or an airport and you'll still be protected right but the thing is you need to download a lot of stuff from the cloud and you need to communicate with all of the engines and everything there. So if you're behind the wrong firewall, you can say, okay, let's say, you know, I'm visiting a friend and his firewall may block some stuff. So you need to make sure that the firewall, the client are behind will allow that traffic. So there's a beautiful escape we saw 
with the list of all the services, all the ports, everything you need to make sure that are open, how to run a test to see if those uh, addresses are functioning as well. And starting from version 85.10, we have the connectivity test. So it's an executable, it's an exe file, really cool. You just run it as an admin and it will just check if everything works just fine or not. And then of course, if something is not, you'll have to mend it to make sure everything will work smoothly. And the last piece is exclusions. Let's say you have a software that gathers all of your files, compress them, encrypts them, and save it on a remote location. So that can either be a very efficient backup or it can be a ransomware attack. So you can have exclusions added to the policy in the exclusion center. Most vendors will have a dedicated pages with everything you need to add if you want to add the exclusion. So in the exclusion video, we saw the Microsoft page where they have a list of their applications and all the right exclusions you need to add. And of course, the exclusion type will change based on the capability you want to add exclusion to. For example, if it's URL filtering, exclusions will be URLs. But if it's file scanning, then the exclusion can be a location on your phone, on your computer where you won't scan or a domain where you download files from and they won't be scanned. So depends on the capability you want to exclude. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this training. Check out the rest of our Jumpstart training and never stop learning. Thank you for watching.